thank you all for joining us today in Medicine Hat. Um, my name is Michaela Fry. I am the very, very, very proud MLA for Brooks Medicine Hat. And thank you to Halo for having us in your beautiful hangar here today. Um, I am a vocal supporter of Halo Air Ambulance, as many of you know. So today has been a long time coming, but a wonderful day nonetheless. Today's a day we've all been waiting on. After years of discussion, advocacy, and community support, I am both humbled and very excited to be here with you today. You're gonna to hear me say that a couple times, but I'm excited to be here today. I wanna to thank the dedicated, hardworking staff, air crews, paramedics, board members, volunteers, and the rest of your team who make a difference across southeastern Alberta every single day. For the past three years, I've had the pleasure of representing Brooks Medicine Hat, and if there's one thing that it's been consistent and obvious to me, it's that this community, Southeastern Alberta adores each and every one of you at Halo Air Ambulance. You are heroes to me and so many others. I thank you on behalf of Southeastern Albertans for your dedication and your service. Born from a grassroots desire to help your community, you have answered the call of duty and impacted the lives of many and saved the lives of so many more. I know communities in Northeast Alberta feel the same way about heroes, helicopter air ambulance services as well, and appreciate your expertise and care. I am joined today by many wonderful people who helped to make this event happen and also serve our community in different ways. So I'm, also, I'm joined today by Premier Jason Kenney, the Minister of Health, Jason Copping, MLA for Carts and Siksika, Joseph Scow, MLA for Tabor Warner, Grant Hunter, Member of Parliament for Medicine Hat, Carts and Warner, Glenn Motts, um, the Honourable Nate Horner, Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Rural Economic Development, CEO and my friend, Paul Carolyn from HALO, um, as well as Paul Str Spring from the Local Hero Foundation. I'm also joined by uh, Mayor Lindsay Clark, Reeve, Dan Hamilton, Past Reeve, Steve Wickering of County of Forty Mile, Deputy Reeve, Richter, Richard Oster, and many more esteemed guests, including many elected council members. And I just wanna say thank you all for being here today again. Also, we're joined by the HALO Board of Directors, Dale Thacker, the Chair of HALO, Rhonda herman Sticko, Vice Chair, Lorraine Dykstra, Trisha Nar Nardari, Bruce Riger, Grenner Villio, Nicole Murphy, Noella Krauss, and Nathan Nunweiler. So thank you to all of the Board of Directors who are here today. I know many community representatives are here and to show their support to both HALO and HERO. But as you might have gathered, we're here today to share the details about the additional funding for HERO and HALO. For those of us who live in rural communities or for people traveling in remote areas, being able to access HALO and HERO services can mean the difference between life and death if disaster strikes. Alberta's government is investing in helicopter air ambulance services and expanding capacity in our emergency medical system as part of Budget 2022. I am confident that the additional supports provided today will strengthen our health care system so Albertans can get the best care possible, no matter where they live. This is a meaningful and timely investment in rural health care. And with that, I would like to invite Premier Jason Kenney. Thank you, so, thank you so much, Michaela, for that and your hard work and your amazing advocacy uh, for Medicine Hat, Brooks Medicine Hat in Southeast Alberta. Uh, thank you to all of my colleagues from the legislature who are here and all the local leaders and, and volunteers from Southeast Alberta communities. I always feel like I'm a little bit back at home when I'm in this uh, part of the province, partly because I've got family roots here in, in the hat going back 100 years. And uh, also, I grew up in a small uh, Prairie Village in southern Al southern Saskatchewan, and so we always felt like when we were visiting uh, the Hat, we were going to the Big Smoke. It was a big deal. So, and so I know how very well personally from my childhood what an important role uh, the medical services in Medicine Hat play for people uh, in this entire region, and that is why I'm so excited to be here today. Let me begin though, just with a word of gratitude on behalf of Albertans for the fantastic work. Uh, behind Medicine Hat-based uh, helicopter airlift operation HALO, which for many years has saved lives. Together with STARS across most of the province and HERO up in, uh, uh, of course, the Fort McMurray, northeastern Alberta region and Wood Buffalo. These are organizations uh, that started as uh, volunteer 
a nonprofit, it's a charities have been supported year in and year out, good times and bad, by local communities through huge voluntary contributions and uh, and great professionalism by the medical professionals who staff these air ambulance operations, and they literally do save lives in this big. Uh, far-flung province where so much of our economic and social activity happens far beyond the reach of our big cities we need air ambulance services first-class air ambulance services that can get to people when they're facing a medical emergency and get them the best quality health care in a hurry and that's exactly what you do I understand that last year uh, Halo uh, in 2019 2020 flew 38 missions so every year dozens of times <clears throat> this helicopter lifts off and goes somewhere in southeast Alberta to help save lives, and lives truly are saved uh, as a result. I also want to thank the, the brilliant folks over at STARS and, uh, and HERO up in Fort McMurray, and I know uh, many of them will be listening in, including I'd like to give a shout out to Mayor Sandy Bowman, who has raised these important issues with us. Now, over the last year, we had some real challenges with emergency management services in Alberta. There was a 30% increase in demand and that seemed to be connected to COVID and a number of other issues. Frankly, uh, nobody saw it coming, but it put our system under a lot of pressure and we ended up with uh, longer than acceptable wait times in many cases. And that's why Alberta's government, listening to Albertans, uh, has put in place an action plan to improve EMS services and expand them right across the province. We did so in this year's balanced budget, the first balanced budget in 14 years with a $64 million increase in annual funding for EMS, including a $28 million increase in support for grand ground and uh, helicopter air ambulance services. We've also appointed a, a task force co-chaired by MLA's Tracy Allard and RJ Sigurdsson, together with uh, the involvement of uh, MLA Tani Yao, who himself is a former paramedic and uh, many experts in the field to advise uh, the Department of Health on how to fix some of the problems that exist in our EMS system, and they're already taking action. I know Minister Copping will detail that. But we know that in this community and in Fort Mac, uh, that uh, HALO and HERO have worked with the Alberta government for many years to get stable, reliable core funding, as opposed to just the uh, fee-for-service funding. In the past, I understand AHS would provide funding for completed missions, and there was, there was always some <clears throat> uncertainty about the, the level of funding, what would be there that put more pressure on, on you as a community to do the fundraising. But you have made the point very persuasively through your local MLAs, through Michaela and the other Southeast uh, Alberta MLAs who are present here today, um, through, uh, through Grant Hunter, through, through Nate Horner. Uh, and I, I just want to thank you for your patience and your persistence fighting uh, for the best interests of Southern Albertans. And so I am truly excited to be here today uh, to announce that for the first time, uh, HALO will be offered guaranteed funding and a contract with Alberta Health Services moving from a fee-for-service model to a million dollars in annual guaranteed funding. Likewise, for our friends up in uh, Wood Buffalo, I am very excited to announce that the Helicopter Emergency Rescue Operation, or HERO, will get close to $2 million under a long-term contract, which is double its current annual funding. And we made a similar announcement uh, for the uh, fantastic services provided by STARS Air Ambulance. Uh, out of, we did so in, in Calgary last week. These are all part of record investments in public health care, in Alberta in this budget, a $600 million increase in the baseline funding for health services. That's on top of a $900 million increase last year. We have always had one of the most expensive health care systems in the country, uh, and um, we will always be there to ensure necessary investments to provide uh, the best possible quality of health care to Albertans. That's what they deserve. And we had to do that in the context of real fiscal and economic challenges over recent years. But here's the good news. With Alberta's amazing economic recovery, with our huge growth across every sector and region of the economy, uh, we now see revenues growing. And yes, we did make some tough decisions uh, to bring our spending under control over the past three years. As a result, we now have tabled for the first time and passed just last week 
uh, Grant and, and Michaela and Nate and, and Jason, all these MLAs voted for the first balanced budget uh, in 14 years. And that balance, that fiscal responsibility, allows us to address pressures in critical areas like healthcare, like air ambulance services and EMS. So we'll be saying more in the days to come about our broader efforts to expand healthcare capacity because one thing we have learned from COVID is not just in Alberta but across Canada, we need to get more bang for the taxpayer's buck when it comes to providing healthcare capacity. We have one of the most expensive public systems in the world, but we didn't get the kind of uh, capacity that we needed during some of the spikes during uh, the pandemic, and that's why we're working on uh, important reforms and expanding services, including intensive care. But here today, we're, we're here to celebrate the success of this community of Halo, of Hero, up in Wood Buffalo. Uh, and uh, I, I know that this investment is going to help the fantastic cr uh, crews and medical professionals who work here every single day to help save lives across Southeast Alberta and through the other services right across our province. And so uh, with that, I will now hand it over to our uh, fantastic Minister of Health, the Honourable Jason Copping, for some more details. Good morning, everyone. It is fantastic to be here. Uh, recognize all of my colleagues um, as the Premier was commenting about the, uh, the incredible efficient uh, advocacy that's being done not only by local councils here uh, but by MLAs and many of them who are, who are in the room uh, but I can I can tell you that MLA MLA Frey uh, was in my office every four to six weeks uh, talking about this uh, MLA Hunter MLA Scow uh, and and I just want to give them a great big round of hand for the advocacy that they're doing for this area and for Havel. So as, as the Premier shared, we're here today to announce an increase. He already announced the increase. I'll, I'll touch on it a little bit, but I also want to talk a little bit more about what we're doing in terms of EMS. But this is incredibly important because the increases, the sustainability, which we heard through the HEMS report for all air ambulance across the province, STARS, HERO and HALO, is incredibly important. And, and HERO and HALO offer a lifeline for rural communities in the northeast and southeast parts of our province, flying Albertans in need directly to a hospital with the required level of care. And we are ensuring that Albertans in these areas will continue to have quality access to life-saving helicopter air services now and, and into the future. And we're doing that by covering about 50% of the base operating costs for both Halo and Hero. For Hero, that's doubling its annual funding to two million under a new long-term contract. And I know many in Fort McMurray and Wood Buffalo are pleased to hear this. And they know what HERO offers their community. Our investment today means they can continue serving the Northeast region of Alberta. And I want to thank Paul for making the drive down here today. I was surprised he didn't actually fly down. You, know, you figure you'd have access to a helicopter or, or something. But uh, yeah, it's, it's working. That's the important thing. And then and as, the, as the Premier indicated, for the first time, HALO will have secure guaranteed funding of about $1 million annually and it will be able to sustain its services out of Medicine Hat with a new long-term five-year contract with Alberta Health Services and receiving funding that is equitable to other operations. And once again, I want to thank both HERO and HALO for being here and for the tremendous work they do, they do for Albertans, particularly in rural Alberta. Please give them a hand. So really, what does this funding do? Over the next five years, it provides organizations, HERO and HALO, with a balance needed to sustain the critical service due to high capital and operating costs. It means that they can continue to respond to calls for medical transfer, transport now and into the, into the future. And I am proud that we're moving to a more sustainable approach that provides predictable funding and brings all operators under new contracts with AHS. Entering into a formal agreement with AHS means having a more integrated approach to providing air ambulance services across our entire province. This will improve oversight and include added operational and financial reporting to ensure quality, safe, and efficient care. And I'm pleased that the main, three main providers will be funded at the same ratio of their operating costs. As we announced last week, STARS will also be funded at about half of their operating costs, just like HERO and HALO. And these additional supports are just one part of our continuing efforts to address emerg emergency medical service issues, as mentioned by the Premier. Budget 22 includes 64 million increase in the funding for EMS to support priority initiatives and to add capacity and improve efficiency. 
This includes $14 million for an AHS initiative to adjust working hours and shifts for paramedics in 14 rural communities. This is part of the AHS 10-point plan. AHS is also making rapid progress on implementing other pieces of its plan to add EMS capacity and ensure the most critical patients receive immediate care. Implementing the plan is starting to show early results. Response to high priority events has improved following the launch of the preempt and divert initiative at the end of February. This initiative allows ambulance to be preempted from assignments instead of being automatically dispatched when a 911 call is received. And this is to ensure more ambulances are available for critical patients. In one recent example, a rural community ambulance was diverted from a low priority call to a high priority cardiac call and the ambulance arrived within mere minutes. Other top priorities are attracting more paramedics and EMS staff and continuing to explore ways to improve EMS delivery, including air ambulance services. As noted by the Premier, we've created the Alberta EMS Advisory Committee, uh, chaired by two of my colleagues, uh, Tracy Allard and RJ Sergison, and, and MLA Tani Yao is also on this, and, and as well as a number of, of, of parties from across the entire EMS spectrum, because we know that the issue is not just about the ambulance, it's about how do we staff them, how do we ensure that we have people have the proper training, how do we ensure that we address issues like fatigue, and then how do we address the issues of ambulance waiting at the, waiting at the hospitals in addition to adding in, uh, additional resources. I am all really looking forward to getting reports from the committee. Now, they're going to be doing two reports, one in spring and, 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 and one in the fall, but I, I also ask them to, if they have an idea right now, bring it forward and we'll use it as a fast fail. Now they changed my language, they call it a fast success, uh, and I'm, 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 I appreciate that, but I do, we do recognize if there's a good idea, let's implement it, let's try it. If it doesn't work, that's okay. We'll try something different till we get it right, because we know we need to address the EMS issues in this province, particularly in rural Alberta. And of critical importance to all this is bringing back to our announcement today is the work that Halo, Stars and Hero are doing. And, and I'd like to point out, and I want to thank them because we were talking about this earlier today, is that they are one of, the, one of the subcommittees and working on how better to integrate and work together, learn from each other, the three organizations, and all become stronger together. And part of the sustainable funding will enable to do that. So once again, I want to thank everyone involved in, in the Halo and the Hero op operations, the pilots, the crew members, the paid staff, as well as the wider emergency support community. And I, quite frankly, I'd like to want to thank all of you because how do they do their work? They do their work because we work together as a community. This is about funding. This is about support. This is about the years of effort to say, we need something for our communities. We are going to support that. And I'm very pleased that our government can help support you. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the CEO of Halo, your hero today, Paul Carolyn. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I make no promises that I will make it through this. Uh, this represents the missing partnership that HALO has been advocating for for almost 20 years. I cannot even come close to recognizing the amount of people that have both donated financially and advocated for this program uh, politically and with their MLAs and their ministers over that entire time. HALO takes extreme pride, and one of the reasons we're most successful and we have such a deep relationship with our community is that we maximize every single dollar. Premier Kenny, Minister Copping, you have our commitment that this investment will be treated with the same respect as every single dollar that people in this room have donated, counties have donated, and corporations have donated to keep this program going for the last 15 years. Later this year, we celebrate 15 years of service to Southern Alberta. Hundreds, if not thousands, of lives saved and certainly thousands of lives impacted. I am extremely proud to serve this program and I can't imagine having a bigger honor in my life uh, to be a part of something so important. I will take a moment to recognize our board of directors who spend their own money to be a part of this program I know of both present and past board members who have hired people to help seed their farms when they needed to attend a meeting with me in Edmonton so that we could advocate for this decision today. I know of board members who have three times the mileage on their vehicles because they show up on short notice for a check presentation from a, a community group 
a 4-H group, a county, a corporation, an individual, uh, and we could never have done it without all of them. To the board of directors, you have dedicated your lives to this, and we are so fortunate to have you as part of our team. I would also like to recognize the Little family. Uh, Les Little is a patriarch of our program. We're very fortunate to have uh, Rangeland Helicopters as our aviation partner. Les, Terry, Doug, Sherry, we could not have done this without you. This is your victory as well. To everyone. We'll never be able to say thank you enough, but you have our commitment that we will continue to serve dedicated uh, service to all of Southern Alberta. I, um, I joined the HALO program shortly after our twin engine helicopter, HALO 1, joined the program. And I remember calling Dale, our chair, and telling him that, congratulations, you're on the next level now. And I followed that up with immediately telling him that the job just got immensely harder. This is just the new stage of that. This is more work for us now, and we're prepared for that work. This represents one-third of the partnership, the missing partnership that we have been asking for for 15 years. We still need, and we have to make sure, that we maximize the relationships that we've developed over that time that make this program possible. We still need to make sure we execute and raise the second, uh, second and third third of our program funding to make sure that we can continue to serve. Thank you very much, and appreciate you all being here. Very proud to have Paul Spring and his wife Andrea here from Hero. I'll call Paul up. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, as uh, Minister Copping commented, uh, I drove down and it was an absolute pleasure. I used to live in Medicine Hat decades ago and uh, do the drive between Fort McMurray and Medicine Hat when I was working up there. Uh, for Associated Helicopters, my wife was still working here at the hospital as a physiotherapist, so I did the drive between Fort Mac and Medicine Hat every two weeks. So I didn't really want to get back into doing it, but I really enjoyed driving down the length of eastern Alberta. It's so rewarding to see what a, what a great, vast province we have. But that vastness is what me means helicopters are required. We, we need helicopters to get at people. We've got Albertans working all over the place in the lumber industry, oil and gas, farming, doing all sorts of recreating, and helicopters are essential. So before I get on with too much about helicopters, big thanks to Premier Kenny and Minister Copping, and uh, not present today, our MLA from Fort McMurray, uh, Wood Buffalo, Tani Yao, who uh, used to fly in the back as a paramedic when I would go out on calls with our single engine aircraft. But this is a momentous um, increase in funding for us. It's a recognition. Thank you so much for this. Uh, the program really started out of passion. Medicine and aviation are really passion industries, but helicopters don't fly on passion. Uh, pilots and mechanics won't work for you based just on passion. They have to put food on the table, so we need money. When we started this program uh, about eight years ago, uh, my wife and business partner at Phoenix Heli Flight and I took a huge chance. We went out on a limb knowing what needed to be done up in northeastern Alberta. I'd already been flying medevacs up there since the 80s. Uh, so I knew the power of a helicopter as a time machine to get people and drugs to the patients who needed them and get them back to the hospital, to pull them out of the woods, to pull them out of a car crash in a remote area. So we, we knew all this, but the funding wasn't there. So we really took a leap and uh, big hand to Andrea, my executive director and wife, uh, girlfriend since we were 15. Um, we rolled the dice and we put in $8 million of our company's money we didn't have $8 million, so we borrowed it. I may have lied to the bank a bit. Uh, to start the HERO program with a dedicated 24-7 helicopter. So we've got uh, nine pilots on that, big twin-engine aircraft, night vision goggles, IFR. We went full right out of the box with the best we could do because the people of our region needed that service. Uh, we'd heard stories of people dying in the woods at night because no one could go to them. And they could have been, say, bleeding out, all sorts of problems that we knew about because my wife worked at the hospital, she would see the doctors and they'd talk about, oh, how come Paul didn't go save this guy? So we took that leap and we slowly built a community around that service. RMWB, our former mayor, Melissa Blake, helped out with the first check we got. 
Then we got some oil companies involved. We were on fee-for-service uh, like Halo for a while. Finally, we got Alberta Health involved, and this is another big step. This will go from about 25% up to 50% of our funding. It really cements our foundation in Fort McMurray. We've had a couple of tough years like everybody in the fundraising business. Um, you can't have events when you're having a global pandemic. So we've slipped a little bit behind. So this is a, a really welcome announcement. Um, we look forward to working with Alberta Health through the subcommittees that Minister Copping mentioned. Uh, a group of subject matter experts, including Paul from Halo, STARS, and people from throughout the province who have input on how we make uh, air ambulance better for the province, how we serve the people of Alberta in an efficient and effective way going forward. So we look forward to working with that committee and coming up with recommendations that the government is willing to listen to. So again, I'll go back to, I really appreciate this funding. It's a great announcement. It, it puts a really solid foundation under our program. We're hoping to get a bigger helicopter. We still need our community partners and our oil sands partners. Everybody who contributes, whether it's five bucks or $500, it doesn't matter. It all goes into the same pot to help save lives. Um, and I'll be available for questions later if you want about our program. Sorry I couldn't bring the helicopter down, but it's, it's there working. And I know if a call came in right now, we'd open the door and this one would be leaving. That's the kind of dedication there is to the program. And you'll all be helping get it out of here. We could pull it out. we got a big group. So again, grateful for this money. Thanks to the province of Alberta, Premier Kenny, Minister Copping. Really appreciate it. Thank you to our speakers. We're going to move to the media Q&A. There's a media microphone just there. If you have a question, please identify your name, your outlet, and who you'd like to direct your question to. And we'll go with one question and one follow-up. Hi there. I'm just uh, calling Glant Medicine at News. I'm just wondering if either Paul or uh, the health minister can discuss. There was some discussion about um, the province, or the general idea being half the operational funding in the agreement but we're hearing from Paul that we're still doing a sort of one-third, one-third, one-third. Can you explain to me the difference of, uh, between perhaps funding for the other services and, Paul, what is your plan going forward in terms of reaching out to municipalities? I'll start and then, and then Paul can supplement. So, you know, what the, there's, the funding commitment is is, uh, is up to 50 percent in terms of the uh, the operating the, the base operating funding. Uh, there needs to be a, a discussion between AHS and the and the organizations about how that's going to work. So we, we actually have budgeted for that, but now now they need to go work out the details. And I understand there's other there's other uh, um, uh, revenue flows as well. But Paul, if you want to talk further to that. Thank you, Mr. Copping, and thanks for the question. So uh, I would just reiterate what the minister said. Uh, we, uh, we've been working on this for, for a number of years, and, and there's also the work that's happening on the task force that Minister Copping and Premier Kenny have stood up about ground EMS. So we haven't finalized uh, the, the negotiations with Alberta Health Services, and that's ultimately where the five-year contract will come from, as well as the final determination of, uh, of funding. So um, we are anticipating 50%. Um, and that's our, it's certainly our intention, but uh, just keeping in track with, you know, the message that we have had in the past and the work that we have done with rural municipalities on, on the funding model that we thought was achievable, uh, this surpasses that. And one of the reasons that we're so excited about the partnership with the Government of Alberta coming on board uh, allows us to do that in an effective way. It not only allows us to continue to provide the level of service that we have provided up until now, but it also gives us room to grow into an even better world-class helicopter emergency medical service program based right here in Medicine Hat. Okay, I, I guess I'm still confused about the 50% and then there's a base rate, but there'll still be fee for service. It, it's a bit confusing, but I mean, half of $3 million isn't $1 million. Absolutely. So I, I think the, the answer to your question is, is that um, this is based on advocacy. The minister has recognized that. And the ultimate and the final number will be negotiated directly with Alberta Health Services, which is where the final contract will be between HALO and, and the Ministry of Health. Are you still requesting money from rural municipalities? We will be still be working with rural municipalities, absolutely. They've been a strategic partner. They've got us this far. And no matter what, we need to make sure that we find the gap, whether that's 33% or 50%. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, Alex McQuaig, Western producer, and this is for the Minister or the Premier. Um, we've heard a lot about efficiencies. Uh, the proposal sounds very similar to what was on the table three years ago. Can you talk a little bit about why it's taken that long? We've had a HEMS report come out. Um, why it's taken this long, and what was the process like? So, so I can start with the question, and if the Premier wants to, or anyone else would like to add that, that's fine. So my, my understanding that, you know, previous government sort of did a one-time grant. You know, this is, this is, this is a longer-term grant, right? So it's a five-year five -year contract. Really what this is about is addressing sustainability. Um, you know, the HEMS report was done because we were taking a look at, you know, at a very high level is how do we improve overall delivery of air ambulance uh, uh, services in the province. At a high level, the, the HEMS said we need, we need sustainable funding, number one. We need to have the parties, we need better integration of operations, number two, and then there, there's, there's a regulation part. I'm, I'm generalizing, but the, broadly speaking, that's what the HEMS report said. So this is the first step of our response to the HEMS report, which is really about how do we provide sustainable funding over the long term, you know, up to 50 percent, um, we talked about with, with Hilo and Halo and STARS. So we've been doing that. The, in terms of the, the integration, this is part of the work that they're doing right now, and it's not just us imposing, it's like come to the table. So that's why we set up the sub -tab table under the Ministerial Advisor Committee. So, you know, AHS with the, uh, with, uh, with the three service providers talking about how do we integrate dispatch? How do we work together? How do we cover each other off? So for example, if, you know, STARS is dealing with a, a particular issue and we were, Paul and I were just talking about that. If STARS is dealing with a particular issue in a bus rollover in, in Banff, then, you know, can, how, can uh, HALO backfill with other areas and go outside of their, 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 normal, their normal operating areas to be able to do that. They hadn't set up the protocol, so let's go set up those protocols in terms of, in terms of dispatch. The last piece is, is the regulatory piece, um, I, and, and you know, we'll be asking them to actually work with us you know, as advisory on this committee to do that. So you know, it's, it's, we, we are addressing the major um, components of the, uh, of the HAMS report. Um, you know, there were some, we had also heard some concerns about, you know, uh, initially in the Hems report saying, well, one organization, right, to do all of this. And, 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 and we heard feedback, you know, particularly from, you know, folks here, right, uh, in the room, uh, and about the tremendous work that uh, uh, Hero and Halo do. Uh, but, but what the driving port of the, of the, the, the or the driving um, uh, concern was we, better integration, better efficiencies working together, and quite frankly, we're accomplishing that. And the first step is, uh, is financial sustainability. Do you have a follow-up, Alex? Yeah, I, I guess the efficiency, I mean, why wasn't this started three years ago? Uh, why did it take three years to, wouldn't it have been more efficient, I mean, these issues existed three years ago, wouldn't it have been more efficient to start doing these processes three years ago rather than... Well, we, we started with the HEMS report, we got the HEMS report, that came in. We had some concerns were raised about, you know, what exactly it says. We consulted with the community and, and now we're driving, we're, we are actually implementing at this point in time. Thank you. Any more questions on the floor? Go ahead. Chris Brown, Chat News. Uh, this is a question for the Premier, I guess. What is it about, uh, as, as Mr. Carolyn indicated in his remarks, it's been years of discussions, negotiations. Is there something specific about this time period that the deal was, was finally struck? Well, I don't know why previous governments uh, didn't provide stable funding uh, to these great organizations. You could ask that about five years ago or 10 years ago. Um, those decisions were made. Uh, what I know is this, that we commissioned a report on how to improve their air ambulance services uh, early in the t tenure of this government, got the report, consulted with local communities, and uh, then over the past year we saw growing stress, stress on the entire emergency medical service uh, network across the province. Um, with, uh, uh, and so we worked with the Department of Finance to bring forward additional funding uh, to address these EMS pressures generally, and part of the uh, part of that was uh, additional funding for uh, air ambulance services. So, um, you know, uh, this, this, we're getting to the right decision. Uh, this is how government policy develops. You, you get the experts to give you advice. You consult with the local community. And, uh, you know, I'll also remind you that in, in uh, the first three years of this government, we were facing a massive deficit, in fact, <laughs> in... Uh, the bottom of the COVID trough in 2020, we were looking at a deficit of as much as $24 billion. Um, we were broker than broke. And uh, so we were not in a fiscal position uh, to start uh, making long-term major 
uh, funding increases across government, but, but that's recovered. We have this strong economic recovery. Our, our revenues are coming back right across the economy with diversification, and uh, we now have a balanced budget. So we were able to add $600 million to the health budget, $64 million to EMS, and $8 million to air ambulance. So I guess there was the policy development, and then more recently the improvement of the fiscal situation that made this possible. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, uh, along the same lines. Uh, it's been uh, about three years, I think, since you've been in MedicineNet for any sort of uh, event such as this or announcement such as this. Why, uh, why are you here now and, and with everything, else, everything happening in the stampede? Well, I, I don't think that's... that's yeah, sure. I, I don't think that's accurate. I think somebody counted. I've been here well over, over a dozen times, but uh, I was here just a couple of weeks ago and uh, making uh, met with folks over at the uh, the Stampede grounds. We have brought forward funding in the budget to develop, help them develop their plan for an expansion of the Stampede grounds. Uh, there's also some initial funding uh, for uh, other infrastructure work in town. I was meeting with people on that. Uh, but look, during COVID, we, it was hard to travel around and do public events, let's face it. But uh, um, no, I, I've been happy to be down in Southeast Alberta many times and will continue to visit. And uh, Michaela, you have something? Yes, thank you, Premier, and thank you, Chris, for the question. Um, I, I would like to note that of our, of the, I believe the 25 people in Cabinet, we have um, only three ministers who haven't been to Medicine Hat, and the Premier himself, I believe, has been to Medicine Hat more than any sitting Premier in Alberta's history, and I would take that to the bank. Um, he has shown a great interest in southeastern Alberta, has always been down whenever I've asked him to come down. Um, his staff have been exceedingly generous with his schedule, and I think that um, later he's speaking to the Chamber of Commerce today to address some of their concerns as well as speak about the budget. So um, I guess my response to that would be if we are... Um, truly concerned about making sure that the uh, that people are engaged with the Premier, I would encourage everyone to come to the Chamber of Commerce lunch at 12 today. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we'll go to the phones. Operator, can you please put through our first caller? Sandra Stanway, Brooks Bulletin. Good morning, everyone. This is a question for Paul Carroll. And Paul, how will this funding change HALO in terms of medical staff, equipment in general, or will things remain status quo? Uh, great question. So we have a, an integrated system with existing Alberta Health Service paramedics. There are, are some incredible efficiencies with that in that those paramedics have exceedingly high clinical skills because they serve both on a ground ambulance and in regional hospitals. So the initial funding negotiations with Alberta Health will continue with our program as we see fit. Uh, we want to explore that partnership further and see if we're using the most efficient way of doing so. Uh, we'll also be working with Minister Copping's task force on what the best uh, capacity is for the system. However, HALO is open to having our own uh, air medical crew members if that is the best path forward. For the time being, we will continue to operate uh, as we've been doing so for 15 years. Do you have a follow-up question? Yes, I do. Thank you. And when will you receive the funding? Do you know yet? So this announcement uh, has been forthcoming only for a short time, and we have not engaged at this time with Alberta Health Services. We will be negotiating directly with Alberta Health as far as the, uh, the term and the amounts, as we discussed earlier. So we do not know when the funding will come, but we're committed to, uh, to a transparent process with Alberta Health Services to negotiate that contract and get those details out. Thank you. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Dave Kaiser, City News. Good morning. My question for the Premier. Uh, Mr. Premier, and you, Angus Reid, polls out here, which is the majority of people who responded to the survey, saying every aspect of your government is either being run poorly or very poorly, and that includes health care. So I'm wondering, the head of the leadership race here, what do you say to these people who are criticizing you and the kind of job you've done so far? Well, actually, I hear Albertans are excited about the amazing Alberta recovery story. We are leading Canada in economic growth. We did so last year. We're doing it again this year. 145,000 net new jobs created in the past 14 months. Incredible diversification. The first balanced budget in uh, 14 years uh, and a government that's delivered on nearly 90 percent of our commitments in the last election. Uh, so we have done what we said we would do and uh, one of the things we're focusing on here today is ensuring high quality uh, health services. Uh, for example, we 
uh, committed to our public health guarantee in the last election that we would maintain or increase funding for the health system and maintain a universal public system. Uh, health funding is now $2 billion higher. Uh, and we're working to improve the quality of those services to get more uh, bang for the taxpayer's buck. Uh, so uh, we, because this is, but ultimately, ultimately none of that is possible unless we have a growing economy. Um, and uh, this economy is firing on all cylinders. Um, I would say the biggest concern that Albertans have right now, though, is the cost of living and inflation. That's why at midnight tonight, we suspend the Alberta fuel tax that will, on an annual basis, save Albertans about $1.4 billion uh, in taxation. Uh, unfortunately, the Trudeau government at the same time is planning tonight at midnight to raise their carbon tax by 25% because they want to punish people for filling up their gas tanks and heating their homes. So we'll continue to address uh, the top priorities of, of Albertans. Obviously, uh, everybody was frustrated with COVID. At, in Alberta, we had a lot of polarization. Some people that, uh, uh, Ms. Notley and others, that demanded the hard lockdowns for the last two years, others who thought, who were opposed to restrictions, and, and I hope that we can move past that uh, and leave that division in the past as we focus on this fantastic uh, Alberta economic recovery that we are now experiencing. Do you have a follow-up, Safe? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Premier, uh, <laughs> leaving the uh, carbon tax out of it, why are so many people then criticizing your government if uh, if you feel like you've done such a good job? Are you being unfairly treated here? Well, actually, what I've seen is incredibly positive uh, comments for, coming from Albertans. I've been all over the province in the last couple of weeks. Thankfully, we can get out and meet people again. And I've been everywhere from uh, Lac La Biche down here to Medicine Hat. And I, I'm hearing a a positive spirit in this province. Albertans are natural optimists, they just need a reason for their optimism, and there's plenty of those reasons right now. In fact, we believe that the biggest, apart from the cost of living and inflation made worse by the Trudeau carbon taxes, the biggest challenge we'll be facing in the next few years is likely going to be uh, a shortage of uh, workers and skills. Uh, we're, and that's why we're skating to where the puck is headed with our Alberta Works initiative uh, in this budget, our support for training, our skills for jobs program, uh, and our reformed uh, immigration program. One thing I'd like to uh, highlight for folks down here in Southeast Alberta is the exciting new rural renewal immigration strategy uh, for communities that have been facing population stagnation or decline. Uh, that is a great opportunity to attract talented newcomers on a permanent basis to help build your communities. And the, the Alberta government wants to be a partner with that. So um, yeah, you're, you say if there's no, no uh, secret that you had a lot of polarization in COVID that um, frustrated a lot of people on both sides. You had your pro-lockdown side of the debate and your anti-restriction side of the debate. What we tried to do was to navigate a, a sensible uh, middle ground approach to avoid uh, the uh, in terrible damage to people's mental, uh, emotional, spiritual, and financial well-being of uh, hard lockdown style policies. We tried to avoid that successfully. Uh, we also tried to avoid the catastro a catastrophe in our healthcare system that would have required us uh, to deny people care. Thankfully, we, we avoided both of those extremes, but unfortunately, there was a very divisive debate. I hope we can put that past us and focus on a very uh, bright future for the province. Thank you. Last call for any questions on the phone. Operator, right. do we have any other in the queue? Oh, sorry, Justin. And, oh, so go ahead. Hi there, just calling Galant from the Medicine Hat News again. Um, Premier, you talked a lot about the criticism that you've received on social media um, last week. What advice would you give other political figures who are maybe using such, you know, terms like authoritarian, dictator, specifically Lethbridge MP Rachel Thomas? Well, uh, uh, social media is, uh, you know, I, personally, I, I, for my own mental sanity, try to stay off it most of the time. Um, but I, I would just say that, um, you know, on social media, I see a, a lot of uh, anger. You can just check out my Facebook page a, a lot of the time. And the Twitter from the other end of the spectrum. But, you know, I, I just think that that those 
th th those voices I, I characterized, uh, people, uh, people calling for my execution for um, crimes against humanity, for violating the Nuremberg trials or some, you know, there's just like these random collection of words that people string together. You know, here's the good news. That represents a tiny, tiny fraction of the population. Back in the day, you know, when people could only write letters to the editor um, or make phone and call-in shows, there, you know, th that kind of a view didn't didn't get get out there. But people now can self-publish. So I think we should. I take it. Um, I, I just I just want to focus on mainstream Albertans who um, are uh, they they believe in. I think generally responsible fiscal policy, pro-growth policies, a good quality public services. They want a strong Alberta. And so my focus is on working with mainstream Albertans to build a stronger and more prosperous province. Uh, and uh, I don't think we should give too much attention to uh, some of those uh, voices on social media that, uh, that are um, really way, way out there on the fringe. But if you don't deserve it, sir, why, why does Justin Trudeau deserve it? He doesn't. I don't, uh, I'm not suggesting uh, that uh, when people call for my execution on social media, I'm not defending it if they do the same for Mr. Trudeau. Uh, in terms of uh, Alberta, look, uh, or Canada, Canada is a democracy, but I strongly disagree with Justin Trudeau on pretty much everything. Uh, and in terms of uh, his abuse of authority, that's why the, Alberta is the only province in Canada suing uh, Justin Trudeau in court to challenge the constitutionality of his use of the Emergencies Act, which in our view was completely disproportionate, a huge overreach, the use of extraordinary powers. Uh, we demonstrated uh, at Coots the ability of law enforcement to deal with a difficult situation using their ordinary police powers. We did not have to resort to uh, virtual martial, martial law because the Emergencies Act is the successor to the War Measures Act. So I think that he created a very dangerous precedent, uh, and that's why Alberta is standing up for civil liberties together with the Canadian Constitution Foundation and the Canadian Civil Liberties Association to challenge uh, Trudeau's use of the Emergencies Act. We hope that, that will, uh, the courts will use this opportunity to limit future governments from a misapplication of those extraordinary powers. With that, I just wanted to thank everybody from the community here. I, I forgot, by the way, when I went through all the MLAs who did the advocacy for... Um, Halo uh, down here, I neglected somehow to mention Joe Scow, and I don't know how because he's hard to miss. So thank you to jo Big Joe as well. And also, I just wanted to also give a particular shout out to Tani Yao up in Fort McMurray, who's been a relentless advocate uh, for Hero and, and uh, Tani, uh, of course, a former EMS um, paramedic himself. As, as we heard, has flown many of those missions, is a, is a passionate advocate for air ambulance, for EMS, and for the people of northeastern Alberta. And I just appreciate these, these folks and their public service. And I, I, once again, I just want to close on a positive note, thanking everybody here in the community uh, for your uh, support for this organization. Because really, I mean, you know, people in the, in the city of Medicine Hat, um, don't need this as much as people out in the underpopulated rural areas or the, low, the, the less populated rural areas down here. And some of them are very sparsely populated, as we know, in um, southeast Alberta. And so you can be two plus hours away from a hospital, from a, a hospital with trauma or critical care capacity. And that's why this, these services are so important. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody in southeast Alberta for uh, your vision in this organization for Paul and Paul, for all that you and your teams do, and uh, looking forward to, to being back here and, and seeing how you're going to be able to expand and stabilize your services with this funding. So God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you.